Howdy, y'all. It is the best time of the year. Halloween season! Since it is 2020 and masks are just a part of life now, I wanted my costume this year to incorporate a mask. So I chose the well-known character, Kaonashi, also known as No Face, from the Ghibli film, Spirited Away. Let's go through the making process together. I started out with some balloons. It doesn't matter what color. We're going to blow up three of them to use as molds for the paper mache parts of the costume. Two will be about the size of your head, and one should be about three times larger than your head. The larger one is the base for the mask. Using a sharpie, I drew a rough sketch of the mask design directly on the balloon. Now for the paper mache. We need some newspaper. Then to the kitchen for some flour. Any wheat flour should do. You'll need a shallow bowl for the paste mixture. There are paste recipes online, but I generally just go by feel, which is something close to three parts water to one part flour. Once it's mixed, it will feel thick, but still liquidy, a bit like heavy cream. Now we need to tear the newspaper into strips. Prepare a nice sized pile so you don't have to tear more later when your fingers are wet. Dip the strips in your paste and place them on the balloon, following the outline you drew, leaving the holes for the eyes and mouth open. You'll want to do about two layers, not too thick because we will be adding more later. Let it dry a bit, then when it's mostly dry but still a little damp, carefully remove it from the balloon. The mask looks good as it is, but it's a little too curved for my tastes, so while it's still a little damp, being careful not to rip it, I turned it upside down and flattened it out a bit, using a bowl to weigh it down until it had dried enough to keep its shape. Now it's dry and I'm liking the shape, but the flattening process caused a few creases. This is why we did only two layers of the paper mache. Now we can add more layers to smooth out those creases. At the same time, I also smoothed out the eye and mouth holes by tearing very small pieces of paper and gluing them to the inside, then folding them over to the outside around the raw edges. With the two remaining balloons, I created some dome shapes with the paper mache, which we will use to create extra height on the costume later. These need to be a bit stronger because they will have some weight bearing down on them, so do about three to four layers. While all of these pieces are drying, let's head over to Walmart. We need some black gloves and a black bed sheet set. Back at home, once the pieces have dried, we're going to trim the rough edges of the mask and do the same back to front paper mache process that we did on the eye and mouth holes to smooth it out. Here I'm making a folded stack of paper strips that I cut to fit under the eyes for the eye bag effect. I smooth those out with the same back to front process. I repeated this process to make a small lower lip as well. When the domes have dried, trim the rough edges.
Looking back, this step is completely unnecessary, but I spray painted the domes black just in case they showed through the black sheet. They wouldn't have though, so feel free to skip this step. We do need to paint the mask though. I used a semi-gloss white spray paint because I already had some at home, but a cheap white acrylic would work just as well. Once the paint had dried a bit on the mask, I went back in and filled in some places where the newspaper was raised with some thick acrylic paint. This step is optional, I'm just a perfectionist and it was kind of annoying me. <laughs> While that dries, take one of the domes and stuff one of them with crumpled paper and tack it down with masking tape. This will be stacked on top of the other globe later. Once the mask is dry, it's time to paint the details. I mixed up some light gray paint that I used to paint the shadows under the lip and eye bags. Then I mixed a purple color for the face markings. I printed a reference picture that I kept on the side to make sure I was getting the shapes right. Tear two small pieces of paper and paint them black. Attach these to the back of the mask with masking tape to fill the eyes. I later went back with another coat of purple to smooth out the face markings. Now we need a small piece of mesh to cover the mouth hole, which is where we will actually be looking out of. I used a double layer of this stuff that I just had laying around. If you don't have mesh, you could just cut a piece of the fabric from the bag that the bedsheet set comes in, but the visibility will be considerably lower. We also need some ribbon for the mask tie, but again, if you don't have ribbon or string, you could cut some strips from the sheet bag and tie them together to make a ribbon. It needs to be long enough to go around your head loosely and tie in the back. Now let's use a glue gun to glue on the mesh and the ribbon. You can use super glue if you don't have a glue gun. Put the ribbon on with just one dot of glue in the middle first, then test it to make sure it fits on your face before completely gluing it down. Don't glue the ribbon all the way to the edge of the mask. Leave a little lip so that the sheet can nestle under the mask and the ribbon can still be tied underneath the sheet when you're wearing it. Now the mask is finished. It's time to put the whole look together. You'll need a couple of binder clips or safety pins. I happen to have both, so I used both. We're going to take the two domes and place the stuffed one on top of the other. Take the pillowcase from the sheet set and put the globes inside so that the edge hangs over just a little bit. Put this on your head and put the overhang tight against your forehead, gathering the edge all the way to the nape of the neck and twisting the rest of the fabric into a tail that you can tuck into the front. If you have black clothing, I suggest putting it on before doing this, but I forgot. And also, if you don't have black clothing, you can actually use the straight sheet from the sheet set and wrap it around yourself like a toga. I personally got this dress and shirt from the thrift store. Find the fitted sheet from the set and then find the long edge. Put the middle of the long edge over the middle of your headpiece. Don't forget a black mask to cover your mouth.
Now tie the kawanashi mask around your head underneath the sheet. Gather this sheet underneath the chin of the mask, so close to your mouth, and use a binder clip to clip it together from the inside. Do the same thing to close the sheet around your thighs. I actually wound up using a safety pin just to make sure it didn't open while I was walking. The elastic of the fitted sheet keeps the gap closed and makes it so that you can easily stick your arms out to put on your gloves. And that is it! The costume is complete! I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I hope you have a great spooky Halloween! If you enjoyed this video, it would be great if you subscribed so I can see you in the next video, but if not, thank you so much for watching this one!